but since November, I introduced a lot of cell, a lot of things to my. I introduced a lot of cell, a lot of cell, a lot of things to my to my train routine. Fucking hell! I think Gilbert Baines just admitted to steroids. Someone asked me to cover this because it went under the radar about a year ago when Gilbert Baines was being interviewed on Submission Radio and had a Freudian slip and nearly said steroids. Now Gilbert Baines has ties with potential steroid users, and we're going to deep dive into the history of Killcliffe and some of the fighters there that have been linked with steroid use and tie it all together with this Freudian slip from Gilbert Burns just to investigate what's going on at Killcliffe and to see if there is potential steroid use within the team there. <laughs> We're going to go over the history of Killcliffe because this is important to the stories. Killcliffe FC, also known as Killcliffe Fight Club, used to be called Sanford MMA, used to be called Odd Knox 365 and used to be Combat Club. And originally, at a stretch, you could say it was the Black Zillions because half of the Black Zillion team ended up moving over the coaches included. I've never known a gym rebrand as much as them as them. And one of the reasons could be, it could just be they have sponsorships and people sponsor them and stuff like that. It also could be a way to avoid the mass attention, the wider public uh, knowledge of the the rumours that have been spreading around about Killcliffe, about Sanford, about Ardnox uh, 365, about the Black Zillions. It could be. It could be t towards that. Because they've got several fighters on the books that have been linked with steroids, who have been caught using steroids. So we'll have a look at some of those fighters now. Some of the notable fighters that you'll see on the list, straight away, Vitor Balfour. We we know he's a, he's a known cheat. He's a known fucking drug cheat. Other, other fighters, Usman, Chandler, Lawler, Gilbert Baines also being accused. Luke Rockhold, Rashard Evans. And we're going to delve into a lot of those fighters and look into their links with steroids and the potential use. So one of the first that we're going to cover is Kamaru Usman. More plates, more dates covered the old Kamaru Usman steroid cycle investigation quite a while ago now. I think it was over two years ago. So you can look into that. It's on his, his channel if you want to go into that more in more detail. It's over an hour long. But we're just going to cover the conclusion. And he, he summarized it quite perfectly, in my opinion. So no, this is not dialed in. Can you get away with EPO at ridiculous levels if you're not being tested at all via your blood? Yeah. Can you get away with microdosing even if they're testing your blood? Yeah. Can you get away with potentially like decently dosing it if you actually understand the biological password and understood it going into it and had expert like a doctor of pharmacy or a coach who literally is fucking specializing in this shit and was hired by the team in order to help you do this? Could you get away with a bit more aggressive use of it? Yes, you could. So yes, there's still an open window for this. This is literally represented in the literature. And I would be sure that any individual who had blatant performance improvements like this, there's a high likelihood that they are leveraging bioidenticals like HGH for injury prevention, I think is definitely on the table for Usman, despite the fact that he's the CEO of EPO. I think HGH is the first absolute no brainer thing for him. Um, I think you should be allowed to use that, to be honest. Like, look at, like, why the fuck would you not want the longevity of your fighter? You know what I mean? Like, he's a big money maker in the league, or presumably he is. He's like the top welterweight, and he's a legend in the sport. Like, why would you not want to injury proof him and keep him fighting for longer? Like, you should let him use this shit, in my opinion. The EPO usage, do I think. So, I, I completely agree with a lot of these steroids and banned substances, they should be legalized. So, I'm not condoning fighters for actually using them because they should all be allowed to use it it's, it's the fact that it's an unequal playing field at the moment and they're doing it sneakily behind closed doors and we don't know who's doing it and who's not doing it at this point uh, but there's a there's a lot of uh, speculation around Killcliffe and some of those fighters there as you can see um the evidence is there so please go check that out i i, I assure you it's really good content and it goes deeper into it. I know it is two years dated and people are telling me that it's improved and that, but a lot of it still stands. And a lot of a lot of professionals still believe that you can get away with it, despite the improved testing. And we're also going to go to, um, I'll probably make another video on this, but the UFC have changed the, from USADA and they've implemented new rules around testing and who does the testing. And it's kind of outsourced into several departments. So the ones that collect it, the, the ones that test it, and then anything that's being found to be positive, found positive, they'll have the earring 
but that I'm pretty sure where the rules have changed is USADA was independent, so the UFC had no say in the matter of any investigation or the outcomes of the investigation. Now, what's changed is the UFC now have power over those investigations and the outcomes of those investigations. As far as I'm aware, without looking too much into it, that was the basic nature of what I uncovered when I was reading through the documents and the, the changes in the legislation around uh, drug testing and the outcomes of drug testing and how they, they're going to punish and sanction fighters. Uh, the UFC are allowed to be part of that investigation, part of the hearing. Now, to me, the only way, the only reason the UFC want to be part of that um, outcome is because they want to change the outcome. They want the power to be in their hands. That is why they've got rid of USADA. And they've tried to make it look as legitimate as, as possible. But when you, you can have direct impact on the sanctions and have a say in those sanctions, that just means that you're taking the power and you're going to affect those outcomes. So there is going to be some bias into those. Okay, so we'll continue with the rest of this video and then we'll move on. Any potentially doing that? Do I think there's some weight behind what Covington's saying, behind what uh, McGregor's saying? Yeah, I do. I, I would speculate that he probably is. That's my guess. It's an educated guess. It's based on a lot of uh, you know context and um, you know performance metrics changes and whatnot. But that's my guess, dude. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. There we go. So uh, go check that out. I implore you go check that out. Uh, a lot of fighters have called out Usman as well as uh, more plates, more dates looking into it. Also, uh, MMA guru, my good friend, uh, he, he did a, a video on it as well. And he, he covered some of the things about um, th th there's a lot into it that you can look into. So they talked about his acne and his body changes and things like that. These performance changes, they, they go into like p potential um, injection sites. He's got like holes and dots and stuff on, on the front of his body potential uh, injection sites uh, more plates more dates did cover that and went over that and uh, ruled that out he doesn't think that those were injection sites but he agrees with certain things about the acne and stuff on his back and you know certain things that would be characteristic of steroid use and H HGG HGH uh, use so I pull you go look more into that I'm just giving you the sources of what what happened uh, around that time and the links, just the, the overview of these fighters and how they link back to Killcliffe and what's going on at Killcliffe. So that's Kamara Roseman. That's that's the first one. That's the first one. So next up is Vitor Balfour, known as steroid user, known uh, TRT user. And we're just going to go over some of the things that uh, Vitor did in his career. So we're, we're going to go down to where back in his early days, um, it was around the uh, Pride days, 2006, uh, Balfour lost a unanimous decision to Pride Welterweight champion Dan Anderson. After the fight, Balfour tested positive for an illegal substance, 4-hydroxy testosterone. In his defense, Balfour argued that he had purchased an over-the-counter supplement which contained 4-hydroxy testosterone. Balfour also explained that he may have received the 4-hydroxy the testosterone as the result of rehabilitative, rehabilitative injections given to him by Brazilian endocrinologist dr rodrigo m greco so if you don't know what a endocrinologist is an endocrinologist is that guy who will give you fucking testosterone will give you steroids he is that that guy that is what an endocrinologist endocrinologist fucking does that is their bread and butter so if you're going to an endocrinologist you're seeking out expert advice and probably most likely doing steroids um so after his surgery to repair torn meniscus in his knee in the summer of 2006. So an endocrinologist wouldn't have anything fucking to do with knee, knee surgery. It's not anything to do with your ligaments, your bones. It is to do with the hormones inside your fucking body. So the fact that he's gone to see an endocrinologist means that he's, he's definitely doping at that point. Uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission eventually received a statement from Dr. Greco stating that he did give Balfour post-surgical injections containing testosterone. Of course he would. That That's what endocrinologists would do. While conceding that, Balfour may have not known about the testosterone. Okay, yeah, you, you an endocrinologist would explain that he's give, what he's given you, so that is bullshit. The NSAC explained that even if Balfour was given injections by a medical practitioner who did not inform him, 
that they contained anabolic steroids, it would still be a violation of the banned sub substances policy 2006. He was suspended for nine months from the date of the evening and fined $10,000. Don't believe it was an accident. Don't believe he didn't know. That is what you go to see an endocrinologist for. You won't be going to see an endocrinologist for anything other than fucking hormone replacement. And a bit later in his career, it happened again. Uh, Balfour chose to withdraw from the fight against Weidman following the Nevada State Athletic Commission's ban on exemptions for testosterone replacement therapy and was replaced by Lieto Machida subsequently. Balfour revealed that he had failed a random drug test in February due to elevated levels of testosterone. Um, elevated levels of testosterone. There we have it. Balfour was tested. He tested positive uh, twice on two occasions. He was caught using uh, testosterone to aid his performance and his rehabilitation. Now, I, I, I agree. Some fighters should be allowed certain types of um, recovery steroids to recover and keep themselves from being injured. Nothing that truly enhances performance because that can be dangerous, as we saw it with um, Bal Balfour when he took out fucking Bisping's eye, like one of the most horrific injuries in, in MMA. So Balfour is one of those fighters that is, is at Killcliffe. I can't give you any notable time differences of when he was fighting, uh, when he was training at that and what, what part of that. But he has got links with Killcliffe, meaning that he knows fighters and he talks to fighters and he's in that group of fighters, that stable group of fighters that, you know, fight there and train there. So out of the list of fighters there, that's two straight off the bat. One known, one known that has popped and uh, has links with the gym, uh, Killcliffe, that is Vitor Balfour. Usman, who has been suspected quite highly, uh, professionals have given their better judgment to say that he could be most likely on steroids and performance enhancing drugs. And now we're going to move over to some of the other other ones in the case. So Michael Chandler has been accused. Okay, so Michael Chandler has been long accused by the MMA community of using steroids. And we have some evidence. This is the only evidence that I could find was on a podcast when he talked about uh, his testosterone levels being of abnormal eye level. Now, we're going to look into this. I'm going to play the clip. It was by Mario Rios. Uh, so shout out to Mario. Thank you very much. I'm just going to steal this clip uh, to add into my evidence. So here we go. I was talking to a doctor that I did the blood work, blood work with, asked the question, why is my testosterone in such a great spot? Why is it in a very clinically high position? Supposedly at... So... As, as Mario was just about to say there, at 37, we, we're supposed to believe that his testosterone is rising. It's above normal levels. It's in such a great spot when the, the average person, their levels fucking decline as they get older. So he's got this fucking 20s level, 20-year-old 20, 20 level fucking testosterone level at the age of 37, 38, however the fuck old he is at the moment. Going back to the notable fighters list here, uh, we've got Usman. We've got Michael Chandler. We've got Vitor Balfour. Is there any more, you ask? Well, of course there is. We had Gilbert Burns earlier that I showed you at the beginning of the video. He nearly slipped up and said steroids. And uh, along with some other evidence that I've found. So this is Gilbert Burns before. You can see his body. It's very. Na I feel like it's a very natural body. A very, you know, still muscly. Still, still got something there. But it just feels a, like a a, re a really normal sort of average sort of body. Now. That was back then, uh, before UFC 264. We have Gilbert Baines today, the fucking soldier, absolutely ripped, shredded, muscly, you know, fucking hell. He's got he's got more abs than a fucking six pack. But look at him there. Like this this is the the change the the change in his body, the physicality change, and the guy is getting older. The guy is 37 now. He's he'll be he'll be 38 this year, and he's he's gone from this. Uh, he's gone from this. To this okay so that that is the notable change there so that's that's another fighter that you know question marks question marks that's what all we're saying we we've only got one that is is guaranteed but we've got Usman question mark Chandler question mark we've got uh, Gilbert Baines question mark there's just too much going on there for it to be coincidence boys there's just too much fucking going on we've got too many fighters that are showing up with potential and links to uh, ped use. I don't disagree with steroids. We should have endocrinologists on board in the UFC working with fighters to help re repair and recover them and keep them injury free, which is good for the fans, good for the fighters, allows the fighters to fight more, especially at top level. 
and keeps your, your, your big fighters, you know, in the game for a longer time. And that's what we all want. So this is the video around Killcliffe. And I'm going to keep it brief, just nothing too complex. Um, just a, a quick insight. We are reaching. It's not Nothing's guaranteed apart from the Vito Balfour, but it's the links back to Killcliffe. The fact that they are changing the name every few years, that they're trying to stay out of the public wider spread. There's no smoke without fire. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you in the next Here's one. Here's to the fighters, the fans and the game. Here's to the blood, sweat and tears and the fame. And here's to as in key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest MMA show.